Welcome back, Single Dad San Gimino TV. We back for the morning story time. This morning's book is Being Frank. What's on the floor? You ready, Dan? Come sit down, buddy. Frank was always frank. Honesty is the best policy, he said. Frank never lied to his schoolmates. Your freckles remind me of the Big Dipper, he told Dottie. Dottie pulled the hood over her face. Your singing is kind of shrieky, Frank told Carol. Carol stomped away. I'm still here. Frank always told the truth to adults. Your breath smells funny, he told his teacher. Ew. Yeah, all right. All right, come on, we got. All right, no treats here. Come on, sit down, boys. All right, all right, stop it. Down. Yo, oh, Brett smells funny. He told his teacher, Miss Aroma. She said, Frank, to the principal's office. He wouldn't get so many wrinkles when he went to the principal Wiggins' office. He said to him, Your toupee looks like a weasel. Frank told his mom on the way home, you wouldn't get so many wrinkles if you didn't glare at me like that. And by the way, you're speeding. And Frank was always honest with police officers. Yes, officer, he said, she knew how fast she was going. I told her. Frank was very proud of being Frank. But other than police officers, adults weren't as impressed with Frank's honesty as he thought they should be. You have wrinkles one day too, mom said rubbing in some lotion. Some things are better left unsaid, said Mr. Wiggins, adjusting his toupee. You don't have to say everything you're thinking, said Mr. Roma, popping a mint in her mouth. Miss Daisley? Her breath stinks? No. You can tell her that her breath stinks. And she wants the kids to tell her that? And she will, she, we, will, we will not go to the principal's office. I'm still going to sing the talent show at the school carnival tomorrow, but I'm not going to ride the Ferris with you, Carol told Frank. But we always ride the Ferris wheel together, Frank whispered. Everyone was upset, and now Frank wasn't so happy either. Everyone was upset with Frank. I don't understand the moral of this story yet. I thought honesty was the best policy. Let me see the cover of the book. It's called Being Frank. Frank clipped his toenails and alphabetized his bug collection, but he didn't feel any better, so he walked down the block to Grandpa's house. Grandpa Ernest was on the porch, clipping his toenails. Incoming, he yelled. Can I see? What's up, Frank, Grandpa said. Everyone is mad at me for being Frank. I'm not sure honesty is the best policy anymore. That used to happen to me, said Grandpa. Miss Peacock walked by and straightened her massive hat. It's new. Do you like it, Ernest? Frank thought the hat looked like a flower store on Miss Peacock's head. Miss Peacock. Well, Grandpa said, there are an awful lot of flowers up there, but my favorite is the purple one in the middle. Thank you, Mrs. Peacock beamed. Toodaloo. Frank couldn't believe his ears. Grandpa, you lied. No, Frank, I told the truth. I do really like the purple flower the best. I talked about the good things on our hat instead of not so good things. Grandpa's best friend, Mr. Pickles, pulled up in his truck. Trying to relish, he called, handing Grandpa a jar and a spoon. I've got a cold and can't taste a thing. Grandpa scooped a spoonful of relish in his mouth, his nose twitched, his eyes watered, <coughs> and passed it on it. Give it to me straight, Ernest, said Mr. Pickles. I can't sell it if it's no good. Grandpa wiped his eye, more sugar, less pepper. Mr. Pickles grinned and shook Grandpa's hand. Back to the drawing board. Thanks for your help. Grandpa, he didn't get mad at you. That's right, Grandpa drank some water. He asked me for the truth, and I gave it to him. We're learning a lesson about honesty and the truth. Frank sighed, so I shouldn't give, it, give the truth unless someone asks for it. You should always give people the truth. Always. You understand, children? Always yeah. tell the truth. So I should not show you 
just have to find the right way to serve it. The next afternoon at the school carnival, Mr. Roma laughed like a horse. Frank said, you tell great jokes. When Mrs. Wiggins did a weird dance, Frank said, impressive spin, sir. And Frank saw Dottie, he said, I like dots better than squares. And when Carol sang, Frank said, you sure can hit those high notes. Frank smiled, Carol smiled at Frank. Dottie and I are going to ride the Ferris wheel. Wanna come? On the way home, Frank gave his mom a poem he wrote for her. Mom, your hair looks nice today. I only see a little gray. And when she smiled, Frank not, decided not to mention the wrinkles around the corner of her mouth. The next day, while Frank held Grandpa in his garden, Miss Peacock stopped by again. You were right, she said to Grandpa. That other hat had too many flowers. Just, pen, just then, Mr. Pickles arrived with a new jar of relish for Grandpa to try. Excuse me a moment, Grandpa said to Miss Peacock. So what do you think of my hat, Miss Peacock asked. By this time, she wasn't asking Grandpa, she was asking Frank. Frank looked at Grandpa on the porch with Mr. Pickles. Grandpa was taking another spoonful of relish and he wasn't drinking any water. Frank knew just what to say. I've never seen a hat like that before. It must be one of a kind. Thank you, Mrs. Peacock Bean. Toodaloo. So how's it being, Frank, today? Grandpa asked. Well, Grandpa, I still think honesty is the best policy, said Frank. But now I know it's best served with more sugar. You can be honest, but you can serve your honesty with sugar. That's a pretty good lesson. I like this book. And less pepper. Do I agree with this book? Yes, sometimes we have to do that in life. It's called being diplomatic. You gotta break this book? No. No? No, it was a zero. Zero? I give it a five. Thank you for joining us. Stop. Do the dance, Angelino TV. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day.